Hello, I wanted to give you a little information about the, the wonders of the TTR diagram. And TTR means tangent tangent radius. Uh, so basically, the, the best way to explore the fabulous TTR diagram is to understand how it is created. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we make the tangent and a tangent and the radius. And that is the backbone, of course, of the TTR. So I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to put a point right at the end of that line, and I'm going to occupy that. So I'm, I'm occupying that point. And that point is called the PI. All right, so I'm occupying the PI, and I am looking back at my back site, and I'm going to use deflection angles. The, the deflection angle is integral to constructing a, a horizontal curve. So I'm looking back in this direction, and then I'm going to plunge the scope so that I'm looking in this direction. So now, of course, I'm going to go ahead and prolong this line. And I'm going to do a deflection angle. Now, a deflection angle is usually the lowercase delta in the Greek alphabet. Uh, delta means change, and so we're changing from this prolonged line. Remember, we learned about prolonging line in survey one, so I'm going to then turn my instrument whatever the delta or I intersection angle, internal angle, it stands for a lot of things, I'm going to turn in that, that many degrees that is indicated on the plan. And so now I'm looking in this direction. Okay. So now I have this angle, whatever it is. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, 90 degrees. Let's change that. I don't want it to be exactly 90 degrees. Okay, so now it's 64. Much better, much better. So here we've got our PI. We've got our forward tangent going into the curve. We've made a, we've flopped the scope. And then for a, a prolonging the line, our deflection angle of 64 degrees. And here's our back tangent going off the, the back of the curve. So then tangent, tangent radius. So you need to have the azimuths of the tangent, you need to have the value of the delta, the deflection, and you need to have the length of the radius in order to build a curve. So now, where is this going to be along these tangents? Well, that depends on what your degree of curve, in other words, how sharp you want the curve to be. The radius is always going to be perpendicular to the tangents at the beginning and end of the curve. And that's because those are tangents. They are tangent to a circle. Here is my radius. Okay, so that is perpendicular. So let's go ahead and move this to this tangent. And just to make it easier on myself, I'm going to move the tangent. Okay. 
So now you can see when I go from the true center of this, get perpendicular on, go perpendicular. I'm going to go ahead and make a continuous arc start and radius. So there we have it. And if we measure this, there's our vertex beginning and end. Sure enough. Same. Hallelujah. So now let's go ahead and put in our long cord. Uh, and there's also a couple of internal distances that are, are very helpful in checking your work. Remember, these days you're going to be laying out a curve with a total station by coordinates, but you might be a little off. There might be some instrumental error, there might be some personal error. Um, you might have not centered it correctly or something like that. And so the external error is actually going to be really, really helpful. And then there's also the mid-ordinate. And that is also very helpful. Now, uh, the degree of curve is how many degrees is in this curve but only a hundred feet of the curve. And that's just a measure of, of really the, um, a measure of, of the, the sharpness of a curve. Um, uh, and you can see that every horizontal circular curve is really part of a circle. It is a sector of a circle. So I hope that helps you. Um, understand a little bit more about the TTR diagram and how it's developed. Message me if you have any questions.